Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a homebrew kind of project. Yeah, let's do it ourselves. So someone built a really cool DC power supply, but this is a dual DC power supply. And there is quite a few of uh, funny features in this one. Um, yeah, first of all, it's obvious it's a dual because we've got two outputs. We've got two amp meters. We've got one voltmeter and you switch the voltmeter. Oh, you can't can hardly move this uh, between one and two. So that will probably be the output voltage. Oh, those are difficult to move and they're loose. Okay, volts and then the current limits and uh, symmetric and individual modes. So if you're in symmetric, I guess one of them, uh, voltmeter knobs will control uh, both of the outputs. So there's an alarm for probably for the current limits. And you can probably, I guess this will be switching on and off the output. Maybe this is a fallback or constant current mode. I don't know yet. But I also find some other little features here. Look at the LEDs here. We got a red and a green LED inside the meter. So that's probably also homebrew. <laughs> The case is quite nice and funny shaped and all that. And we got some, uh, this, this aluminum front plate here is one of those uh, you develop uh, with the UV light and then you uh, develop it. And then you have this uh, nice aluminum sticker. We, th we used this so much back in the nineties. It was a big, big thing. And uh, obviously, we got two, uh, what is that? 3055s, yeah, it is. What is that connector doing there? Cable is like that, it's a little dodgy. <laughs> There's also another little funny thing I wanna show you. That is the bottom. All sorts of uh, funny screws or, you know, and some extra holes from previous uh, attempts or experiments. So definitely a DIY project on its way. Maybe it's, you know, maybe we just open it like that. Yeah, I definitely want to open this first and do a little inspect before I power it up. I don't know if I should come with all sorts of flame this and flame that, but I mean, it's, it's really not that bad. From the outside, this front plate design and the whole layout and the way that it's made from the outside. I mean, that's not bad, right? But maybe we should call this one the beauty and the beast. <laughs> like, are you ready? Inside here, it is just amazing. Okay, so let's dig a little bit into what we got here so far, what I've seen. We got two speakers. Right inside a power supply, and um, that will be old home etched circuit boards. And look at that resistor there, the thin, thin wire in the middle of the picture, right there. Probably some current limits, short circuits, some stuff, right. What is that? A uh, yeah, 723 voltage uh, supply chip from 1980. So that's probably how old this is. This explains also a little bit the building style and all that kind of stuff. It is quite old. And I believe the loudspeaker go to one of the op amp. We, we got two op amps here. One drives the loudspeaker and the other one's probably doing some current limits and stuff. And of course, we got two of those circuit boards here stacked because it's a dual output. That's the auxiliary voltage um, for the power supply regulation and all that kind of stuff. That is your current sense resistor. And definitely the meters has been tampered with because you see here, 
in good safe distance. Uh, there we got some screws and down here and down here that's the different LEDs and again all wires stiff wires except it's all stiff wires man oh yeah and uh, it is so we got dual potentiometers for the voltage set and this is only for one of them right so when you go into dual both of them just track using two individual potentiometers. So that's not too bad, but that is definitely how it's done. So you still got two completely isolated supplies. You can parallel serials or whatever you want to do, and then they can track. So that is uh, quite sexy. And um, what else can I show you what I figured out so far? This little switch here, that's probably uh, amp meter ranges or something like that. See, there's a little resistor wire here, and this one is just hanging very close to the side. Wires that short the amp, amp meter. So that is probably a high range when this one goes up here. High range, low range. And it's the same in the other side. And we got, yeah, wires all over the place and in one big... Oops. The funny thing about this case is... When you take out out the this funny stuff, ah, it locks like that, right? And then you pull it back, put it in here, and put a screw. And when these goes out, everything just completely falls apart, including the front and the back. They just fall out. There, there isn't any screws through the bottom plate, the rear to the bottom. No, 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 they just fall out like that. I just push this in so it's not falling out too much, but they're just standing there. And um, that is our mains supply switch, and that will be the output, not isolated or anything like that. That is the output uh, current range. We got our mains transformer, and remember, this is our mains entry. Nothing holds this wire. It just goes to the transformer. At least there is a fuse. I mean, that is definitely what you need in this kind of box, right? And I would also say an earth connection could be <laughs> life-saving. There's a good safe distance here. Here we go. So that will be mains entry. And like I said, Good safe distance to whatever kind of stuff you're doing. Oops. Like a half a millimeter down to some other windings uh, of the transformer. It's impossible to make it figure out what to focus on. It just wanna pick all up all sorts of shit. And uh, I don't know if I dare to power this up. Definitely I want to protect myself a little bit oh, oh this is some funny no this is this is not mains this is ah oh, this is a current setting potentiometer right okay so that is what we we're doing here and okay so the mains where is that one it's that probably okay so there's a switch down there somewhere with some wires all over the place and I don't know man. Oh yeah, you gotta love this. So this is output. And we got a big nasty capacitor down there. So this is the output in some nice clean wire. And it's the same on the other side, see? This was mounted inside somebody's home and they painted it and... So the paint is also in here. And then... Another nice painted wire goes to this audio DIN connector here on the back. So that is his own little DC system. And uh, I don't know. Are we going to power this up and see if we um, survive? Oh, oh, I feel if we do this together, I'm not too afraid. 
so I will power up. I did, of course, um, test that we don't have any connectivity to chassis, and I have my the, the green, yellow wire here to my protective earth. So, I mean, if there is a leak, um, it's going to be fine, right? So, mains is connected, and uh, this one is an off. We got mains input and... Oh, did you hear the little beepity beep? How nice! They're green and green. It's not so cool with the 1.7 volts. <laughs> I was expecting... I was expecting more or less the same because I put the voltmeters into the same this is in it we are now in independent mode and let's try and play with the left oh look at that so the voltmeter here is actually working let's just oh hey yay yay and then okay this is maximum 24 25 all that is fine let's crank it down to 10 Okay, well, meter seems to be quite all right. All right. What is what is wrong with it? Oh, oh dear. What if we? So that one is also working. It is so far in the first little micro test. Oh, this one is really acting up. Uh, there's a big mechanical hysteresis, but I believe it's because the potentiometer is completely loose. So, how is this symmetry working? And it should be this one, right? Oh yeah, look at that! Both the volts now track. How nice! So now I got 10 volts. Uh, okay. So now I can put them in series and play with analog instruments and whatnot. It could have been cool to have a little line here from symmetric to that, but you'll easily remember that, right? Okay, I will try and uh, set up something. Beep, 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 beep. It's, it's not too bad, so if you're working around with your electronics and then suddenly you hear this beep beep, oh, something is probably overloading. So that is probably what it's doing. Maybe it's maybe it's okay to to short it. What if I crank down the minimum? Okay, so that is definitely the current limit. How about the other one? Let's crank it all the way down. Ah, there's another! I mean, in the beginning, I was like, this is probably the dumbest idea ever, but I start to like it already. <laughs> it's, it's really not that stupid when you're working with electronics. I mean, to have a little BBD beep, I mean, when... Yeah, okay. I don't know. What do you think about the this invention, the BBD beep uh, overload current? I mean, please comment if you think this is the most genius thing or the most dumb thing ever. I mean, I would really love to hear if you're working with electronics <laughs> and if you think this is a good idea. I mean, yeah, why not? So now, if you have noticed, I connected some more banana plugs and this is because they're going to two of my loads. So let's just go for 10 volts, about 10 volts on each of them. I will try and adjust both of them so accurate as I could possibly do. Oh, it's sailing a little bit. Okay, so this is about 10 volts. Okay, give or take. Now I will crank up my current limiters. And I am now in the low level, remember? Those switches, they can select different uh, meter ranges, right? So let's take the left. No, this is the right one. And let's just 
play with the current 100 milliamps on. Okay, so 100 milliamps is full. And then I flip this up. And now 100 milliamps is down there. Okay, so this is supposed to be like that, right? So the 100 milliamps is, is reading way too much. It should have been 100, right? And then you go here. And then you have 100 here. Then I would assume this is 1 amp, right? And still we see 10 volts. So let's play with that. 100 milliamps. 200. Okay. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> and it's reading, reading 8, right? 800, 900, 1 amp. Okay. And it's hammering up. So it is actually delivering 1 amp right now. Let's try and play with the... Mm. <laughs> How funny. So there's no hysteresis or anything here. This is more or less just going on and off. Wow. But it works. And now I put it back to 500. And let's play. And then see. It goes down. Funny, funny, funny. Let's test the... Let's leave this running at 500. And let's play with the left one. I'll crank down the current to 500 and crank it on. Damn. And that meter is nice and accurate. And the potentiometer is almost at the top, by the way. So it's not Half of the meter is half an amp. No way. It's not like that at all. So that is uh, 500. Let's try and turn it on and off. Look at the output voltage. It's very good uh, regulated. So there's definitely two wires going to the banana plugs here for correct uh, feedback and all that. It's definitely working really, really good. I must say that... I was not super impressed about the building quality and how it looks and all that. But I mean, is that is that important if it really works? So now I'm loading both of the outputs, 10 volts and a half an amp. And I will just... Yeah, it's, it's okay. I can touch the transistors. Ooh, yo, 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 they get... Of course they get warm. Because I have 25, that was what it could give, right? So I have 15 volts uh, over the regulators. Uh, maybe it's dropping a little bit as well and all that kind of stuff. And then a half an amp. But we could, of course, uh, give it some more. This is one amp and the other one, one amp as well. So that is uh, two times 10 watts. So that is 20 watts output. But it's using 87 watts from the mains input. Ooh, yoy, yoy. So you can imagine it's not going to take long before... Ooh, yoy, yoy. Already. <laughs> Ooh, yoy, yoy. Let's turn this off. <laughs> yeah, no, no big surprise. I mean, you can definitely uh, calculate um, 87 watts <laughs> minus 20 and this little piece of aluminium. I mean, it does it does not take a doctor degree to figure out uh, this is going to get really, really warm, right? Ah, I also figured out this little alarm switch here, see? So this is so you can turn off the audio alarms if you don't want to hear, or if you're using it in constant current mode for whatever kind of experiments, obviously uh, you don't want to continue to listen to the sound. So of course it got a feature to turn off that oh i have now zero amps and it still lights up oh that's the other one ah oh, man it's confusing too many loads and too many wires and all that kind of funky stuff here now i can turn on the alarm again what if i crank it down to zero 
could be fun to see how sensitive it really is in the lowest setting. So this is 100. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, ah, uh, see, now you don't want to listen to this. And then you can go out of 100. Let's give it a few. Okay, good. That's 10. Okay, 10 milliamps. Let's, oh, see. So this is 5 milliamps, 4, 3, 2 milliamps. So that is my zero all the way down. It doesn't go below zero. And this is what mo a lot of modern linear power supplies, they actually do. They actually go all the way down to below zero. So that means at no load, you can confirm that the current um, mode will be activated. But not in this case. If I turn off my load, see, it is still green. If my current is all the way down. Yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> it's really working. Remember when I first looked inside here, I was kind of shocked about this build quality. But you got to see something here. The meters, they are perfectly aligned. They're perfect at the same height and the distance between all the meters. And what do you know? Look at the holes. They are made round and perfect fitting all the way around the meters to the last, I don't know, a fraction of a millimeter or something like that. How the heck is that possible? when this is the kind of electronic skill level you're at. And I mean, the demonstration here about skill level, look at look at the holes for the speakers. They are some beautiful. I mean, I'm very, very sure that I can say it's not the same person who made the holes for the meters and the holes right here or anything in here as well. I mean, that is that is definitely clear. So this is the circuit board. Still got a lot of wires and stuff in the way. See, it says here in text, Stromforsyning. So that is a power supply. And then there's an MJ logo, 141079. So I was not totally wrong about saying 1980. So this is the mains input up here. And what you'll see is that here, look at the distance between this whole mounting and all that kind of stuff. And look at the this one here, right? And by the way, they couldn't fit a nut around this one because of the transformer is just mounted too close. And also, you should note the soldering on the everything here is just so bad. Everything is more or less falling apart. I would definitely call this power supply directly dangerous. And I would not recommend anybody to use this one before it's been completely refurbished. But I must admit that the circuit really works. It's perfectly stable and voltages uh, and the current and the feedbacks and all that kind of stuff. It really works. It really, really does. So I think that is more or less what I wanted to show you about this fantastic homebrew power supply at a whole other level. <sighs> Definitely. But I mean, you all got to start somewhere, right? I probably wouldn't like to show you my first power supply. I mean, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it and we'll see you again. Bye bye.